Hi, ArcfieldWeather.com meteorologist Paul Dory in here on Tuesday morning, February the 20th. Probably the biggest weather story across the nation right now is another powerful storm system uh, impacting California with heavy snow in those higher elevation locations of the Sierra Nevada and heavy rain along coastal sections. This is a continuation of a very active weather pattern across California and the rest of the U.S. West Coast, all contributed to by an El Nino event that continues across the tropical Pacific Ocean. I posted uh, the latest on El Nino, and we'll go through that posting right now, all available at the homepage of arcfieldweather.com. And El Nino is about to collapse and flip to a La Nina, and we'll talk a little bit about the ramifications on the Atlantic Basin tropical season that officially begins on June the 1st. Here's a look at the sea surface temperature anomalies dating all the way back to the latter part of November 2, just a few days ago. And just to orient ourselves here, this is the west coast of South America. All of this represents your El Nino over the past several weeks. This line right here, there should be a line right here, is the equator uh, latitude and again warmer than normal conditions uh, since the latter part of November but notice in the last several frames here the departures from normal are lessening in other words this is starting to cool off a little bit and again we're just looking at the surface here and again the uh, departures of normal those reds are slowly disappearing and this is a sign that uh, at least relative to normal, the water is certainly getting cooler over the last uh, several frames here. And this is indicative of the ending of El Nino and soon to be a La Nina, colder than normal sea surface temperatures out across the uh, tropical Pacific. Now, another way to look at this is to look beneath the surface. So we'll just scroll up in the posting right here and take a look at this. And, uh, notice the blue water here kind of bubbling up here towards the uh, latter part. Uh, this is again going back several weeks to the middle of December all the way up to a few days ago. The colder than normal water is beneath the surface here and starting to bubble up. This is the surface right here and we're looking all the way down 450 meters below the surface. And notice also the, the reds, the deep reds are fading away here in the last few frames. Again, this is another sign that some upwelling or colder than normal water is bubbling up towards the surface and all indicative of the ending of El Nino and the soon to be La Nina out across the tropical Pacific Ocean. It looks like certainly by the spring season of the Northern Hemisphere will probably be neutral. And then by the summer, the tropical season in the Atlantic Basin, a full-blown La Nina looks like it will form and it may end up becoming a moderate to strong La Nina. Well, those were actual observations of the sea surface temperature anomalies, both at the surface and below the surface, all kind of suggesting that El Nino is in a weakening phase and it soon may become a La Nina out in the tropical Pacific Ocean. This is a collection of computer forecast models that certainly provides support to the idea of El Nino flipping to La Nina. We're currently sitting right at this area here, uh, roughly 1.5 to 2 degrees above the normal in that ENSO 3.4 region. We'll, we'll show uh, where exactly that region is in a moment. This is basically the central part of the Pacific Ocean. So anything above this neutral line right here represents El Nino conditions. Anything below it, La Nina, you can certainly see the a vast majority, if not all, of these computer forecast models listed right here uh, pretty much suggest the disappearance of El Nino, uh, first to neutral, and then the appearance of La Nina conditions, colder than normal, sea surface temperatures out across the central tropical Pacific Ocean. This is a rolling three-month period, let's say uh, uh, July, August, September, August, September, October, and uh, maybe a, a degree or more below normal by the time we get to the latter part of the summer, the early part of the fall. Again, that will coincide with the Atlantic Basin tropical season. Typically, La Nina uh, years are more active in terms of tropical activity 
in the Atlantic Basin. By the Atlantic Basin, I mean the Atlantic Ocean, the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean Sea. Uh, with La Nina conditions in the tropical Pacific, there tends to be lower wind shear in the uh, breeding ground region of the tropical Atlantic. That favors development and it favors intensification of tropical storms. So again, uh, the flip from El Nino to La Nina is a favorable factor for tropical uh, storm development and intensification uh, on, a, on a typical basis, on a climatological basis here. Certainly, the computer forecast models uh, support the idea of a moderate to a strong La Nina by later this summer going into the fall. Now, I mentioned the ENSO uh, the excuse me, the Nino 3.4 region. Meteorologists kind of subdivide uh, the El Nino region here. Again, this is all along the equator here into different sections called Nino 4, Nino 3.4, and all the way to the west coast of South America. It's known as Nino 1 plus 2, just kind of a, to make it a little simpler to uh, refer to these particular areas of the tropical Pacific. That computer forecast compilation, uh, the plume of those models was uh, predicting temperatures right here in the central part of the uh, tropical Pacific, that Nino 3.4 region. So again, this, uh, for further viewing, just go to the arcfieldweather.com website and you'll see this particular map. Now another, another thing I want to point out here is uh, displayed here with what we call the multivariate ENSO index. All the red represent El Nino conditions here going all the way back to 1980 and all the blue La Nina conditions here. And you can see in the past couple of decades, let's say going back to around the year 2000, there have been multiple El Nino events, but most of them have been rather short-lived, whereas the blue or the La Nina have uh, generally been considerably longer periods of time. That's why it's not too shocking that this El Nino is fading away after only about a year of existence. It really got underway last, uh, early last year, 2023, and it looks like it's fading away right now uh, going into the spring season in the northern hemisphere. But again, really over the past couple of decades, most El Ninos have been rather short-lived events. This multivariate ENSO kind of takes into consideration atmospheric conditions and oceanic conditions in order to determine uh, which index value uh, should appear, uh, whether it's positive here or El Nino or negative here, La Nino, and it's all described uh, in uh, the, uh, the uh, heading under this particular plot here, again, at arcfieldweather.com. Well, a couple other plots I'd like to show here. This is a forecast map from uh, what they call a North American Multimodel Ensemble for the August, September, uh, October time period in terms of sea surface temperature anomalies. And this is just one of those models. We saw that kind of a plume of the forecast models before that included all kinds of models the european model canadian models this is from one of noah's models here and certainly displays la nina a clear signal for la nina here by the august september october time period this is the west coast of south america all the blue here represents below normal water temperatures and uh, quite significant here maybe down to minus two degrees that is uh, typically considered the strong uh, the, the threshold for it to be labeled as a strong either La Nina or uh, El Nino in this case uh, it, this collapsing El Nino certainly can transition to a moderate or even a strong La Nina by later on this summer season and again that will be a favorable factor for tropical storm development and intensification right in this region, right here, the breeding grounds of the Atlantic Ocean. Well, one last uh, map I'd like to show. This is another favorable sign for a lot of activity this summer and fall in the Atlantic Basin. Uh, 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 again, the Atlantic Basin, including the Gulf of Mexico, Caribbean Sea, and the tropical Atlantic Ocean. The current sea surface temperatures 
are uh, well above normal throughout the Atlantic, the tropical Atlantic, and there's no reason to believe that this will change. So this is another favorable factor for tropical storm development and intensification this summer and fall. What we're looking at here is west coast of Africa right here, the tropical Atlantic Ocean right here, Caribbean Sea uh, right in this region, and all of this area is currently featuring warmer than normal conditions shown here by these oranges and reds. And there, again, there's no reason to believe that this will change Computer forecast models tend to support the idea of a continuation of the warmer than normal sea surface temperatures in the Atlantic Ocean this summer and even into the fall. So these two factors, the fact that El Nino is about to flip to La Nina, resulting, likely resulting in lower wind shear across the tropical Atlantic and the warmer than normal conditions uh, that will also likely exist this summer and fall. All lead me to believe we'll have a very active a tropical season officially beginning in June, but who knows, we may get some systems to deal with as early as May this year, and it looks like it stays quite active through the summer and into the fall. So that's it for now. For ArcFieldWeather.com, this has been meteorologist Paul Dorian.